Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I do appreciate it. I hope your day is going super well. I'm in Luminar 4 today, and this is episode number one of my Luminar 4 tutorial series. I have 10 videos planned. Uh, this is going to be the getting started video. I'm going to cover uh, the four different filter tabs. I'm going to cover looks. I'm going to cover the library. I'm going to cover the canvas tools. I'm going to cover, um, what else am I going to cover? Uh, layers and masking, things like that. So I've got all these videos planned, so keep coming back. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. Uh, minimum of 10 videos in this series, and outside of that, I'll keep doing workflow videos and other things as well. But I hope you're excited to have it, and let's just jump into it. Luminar 4 is new and exciting. I've had enough people mention to me that, uh, you know, hey, don't just keep jumping into the workflow. Some of us aren't familiar with Luminar 4, so my hope with this series is that I can help those of you that are new users get ramped up quickly so you can really dive in, so to speak, and start having a good time and, of course, a lot of success editing your photos in Luminar 4. But I also intend to be able to drop in tips, tricks, hints, ideas, things like that for the more advanced users that maybe have used Luminar 3 or Luminar 2018 before that and are just looking for additional insight. So without further ado, let's get going. Um, okay, so I'm in Luminar 4 here. I've got my library and because this is an overview, kind of getting started video, I'm going to start with the very basic idea, which is in order to edit in Illuminar, you have to put a photo in Illuminar. So how do you do that? So in Illuminar 4, you can just click this plus button and you can add a folder with images. So I'm going to click that. I've got this test folder here with a number of images in it. Notice I cannot grab that image individually. Um, I have to grab that whole folder and that's, and I'm going to hit cancel. Um, and that's because I clicked on add a folder with images. You have another option, which is edit single image. If I click on that, I can grab that single image, which is on my desktop. And in that test folder that I just showed you, these are no longer grayed out because I'm opting to in, um, basically import a single image. Now I'm not going to do either one right at this moment, but the difference is when you add a folder, you're putting that in the library module. You're effectively adding it to the library. Um, now, that doesn't change the location. That doesn't um, do anything. And I'll cover this in the library video that I'm going to do. But just because you add a folder doesn't change its location or anything like that. It remains where it was initially. In this case, that folder is on my desktop. Even if I add it over here on the right-hand side as a folder into Luminar 4, um, it still resides where, uh, where it resides. So it's not a move, in other words. Now, the add single image, um, that's also uh, like a quick edit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to say plus, and I'm going to say open. And you will notice um, it's going to open that image, and it's going to take me straight into the editing panel. Now, I don't want to do that just yet. Let me go back to this library, and um, I'm going to go back to the full library view. Let me move up one. There we go. And you can see this photo is highlighted, and it's, um, it's a photo that I had in another folder, so it's putting it down here. But what I wanted to show you was on the right-hand side in the library, you have different folders. There's all photos, which is all 142,000 that I have in here. There's on this day, and I'll walk through this in detail in a future library video, but there's a section called single image edits. When I click on that, that's the photo that I just added. So you can use Luminar in one of two ways. You can use it as a library where you um, add folders of images and edit those, and it does maintain a catalog database of those edits for you, or you can add single image edits uh, which is not ba making them a part of your library. Okay, now before I get too far into that, that's how you get a photo into Luminar. You've got a number of things across here. Now, I did a UI tour, uh, kind of like a, a, a what's new, what's different video. I'll put a link up there. I highly recommend watching that as well because I go through a lot of these icons in detail. And in the interest of not being completely repetitive, I won't cover all of that today. Uh, but you do have looks, which also have been known as presets. These allow you to do a one-click um, look and apply that to your photo. Uh, you've got zoom here, before and after. This is crop and erase. This is export. This is your single or uh, multi-image view. And then across the top here, you have your library module, your edit module, and your info module. Edit is where you get into the the tools, which used to be known as filters, for actually making slider adjustments to individual sliders to adjust the look of the photo. 
and info is where you find out information about this photo. So you can see all of that there, what day I shot it, what I, it was shot with, what the stats are on the photo, and that sort of thing. Now going across the top menu, you can also, uh, every now and then you may want to check for updates. You just click that and it says, hey, I'm up to, eight, up to date, so that's good. You can also here install plugins. And so what this will do is give you the option to install Luminar 4 as a plugin to Photoshop, uh, Lightroom, uh, uh, Photoshop Elements, and Aperture if you have those apps installed on your system. I do have uh, Photoshop and I do have Lightroom installed and I've already clicked the install button. It's grayed out on Elements and Aperture because I do not have them, but all you do is just one click to install it, but that's basically how you do it. You just click uninstall or install. The point is you can use it as a plugin to Photoshop Lightroom, these other popular uh, host apps. Okay, coming across the top under the file menu, you have different catalog settings. Uh, again, here you can add a folder or uh, edit a single image, that sort of thing. You can also add a Luminar Looks collection. So if you purchase a Looks or preset pack from um, the Luminar Marketplace or from other photographers, I've sold some in the past and I will be making some for Luminar 4, um, you can install it. You just click on that and then it'll prompt you to go you know, find the file. Maybe it's on your desktop. You just click the file and say open and it'll install that. You can also drag and drop the looks pack on top of the Luminar 4 icon and it will install that way as well. Okay, continuing across the top, you've got export, share, open in, different things like that. Pretty simple uh, and common things. Batch processing, if you want to edit multiple image, uh, images at the same time. Here you do have access to plugins. So if you have a RAW HDR, which I've done in a couple of previous videos, as a plugin to Luminar 4, you can go edit a photo there. And if you have other software products, like I have quite a few, you can go uh, use those as plugins as well. Continuing across the top, library image. Uh, in images, you can flag and rate them and that sort of thing. So it allows you to sort of rank or rate your images and then sort by that. Uh, various other things here that are fairly common. View to, if you want to change any of the view parameters around your images and that sort of thing. Uh, like in the sidebar, you can hide that sidebar, which is now hidden. I'm going to go back to, um, where was that? Here we go, sidebar, and I want to show edit. So there you go. Um, various controls there. You can also even change the background ground color of your editing. So maybe you want to make it white. I do not. That just makes me go crazy, kind of. So I'm going to go back to background and say dark. But that's an uh, FYI, in case you'd like to change that. Um, and you can hide the histogram, you can show clipping in the histogram, things I'm going to get into in future videos, uh, and then basic window and of course help. So that pretty much covers it for a quick UI tour. Let me show you a couple of other things. Okay, when you're in the editing window, which was, you know, you've clicked on a single image and you here uh, have the edit tab uh, clicked, you'll see that you have a histogram which you can hide if you would like to, which is down here below. At that very, those three dots at the bottom, you can click hide histogram and it's out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and show histogram. As you notice down here, you can also uh, copy and sync adjustments from one photo to another. So if I really like what I did to this photo, I can then turn around and say, I'm going to take those same edits and copy it to another photo. Very handy to have. Um, coming down this right hand side, you have four icons. The first one is layers. I'll do a separate video about layers, but it basically allows you to create a new layer on top of your base photo. And a layer is kind of like a, a transparency, if, if you're my age and you remember transparencies. But uh, you could lay that over a photo and then whatever you do to that is going to show through uh, and you can mask in or out things from the bot. It's, I'm gonna, I have to do a separate video about it, but it allows you to stack, stack edits and then blend them together using masking tools to fully customize the look of your image. That's a way to put it. Um, and then you have some basic tools there. Um, on the canvas tools, this is where you crop and rotate, your erase, your clone and stamp, and then lens and geometry. Lens and geometry is basically fixing verticals and things like that. Again, I'll do a separate video about canvas tools. And then you get over here to four different tabs that include what I continue to call filters, but which are now called tools. And these four tabs are essentials, and then creative, and then portrait, and then of course pro or professional. Um, and each of these have a lot of powerful uh, tools slash filters. And each of these, I'll just go into this uh, first one, Essentials. And Light is kind of, if you use the previous version, it's kind of like Develop. 
But each of these, as you have a drop down, you can come in here and do different things to the photo, right? So you can increase highlights or shadows. There's advanced settings if you want to get into the tone curve. Um, different filters have, or, or tools have obviously different sliders, but some of them have the advanced settings as well. And then on the base uh, layer under light, you don't have any masking, but you do have masking available on all the other filters on any layer. So you can come in here and say golden hour or something, and it's probably not going to look that great here, but you know, if you just wanted to add some golden hour, and then if you wanted to, you can get into a masking tool and uh, you know mask that in. Masking is basically painting or erasing. So you could paint that in or erase it from specific parts of the image using the masking tools. Uh, and that's really about it. This last piece down here is history. History allows you to jump back in time. Uh, you can see my original photo there as well as the different uh, steps that I took. There it is with the golden hour enhancement that I made. Um, and I can go all the way back to original if I'd like to. And then of course you can hide history by just going back and clicking on one of the uh, looks or excuse me, filter slash tools tabs. Um, and I think that pretty much covers what I wanted to go over. This was a little bit of a tour of the uh, entire interface. I did want to um, show some of the library as I did in the beginning where you have all these various photos. Let me go to that look. Uh, there we go. Um, and you can kind of see, you know, you can get as many photos as you want in the library. I've got 140,000. A lot of these are raw files. In fact, the majority of these are raw files from various trips. You have the ability to organize uh, in the folders here. I've got an Austin folder, and then within each, I've got a sub uh, subfolder. I've got a European folder, and these are various trips to Europe I've taken over the years, sorted by uh, my preference, which is location and date. And same with U.S. travel. I've got you know a, a massive amount of trips around the U.S. where I've gone to different places. I like to sort them by location and date. The point is, you have a lot of flexibility and a lot of power, and this was uh, video one in my Luminar 4 tutorial series. Just kind of a getting started video. Get your photos in there, do some basic edits, get familiar with the user interface, and a high level touch on the library. I'm gonna dive into all of this in a lot more depth coming really soon, my friend. So I do appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. I hope you're enjoying Luminar 4. And please, if you haven't, do subscribe, share, comment, let me know your feedback. And by the way, I'm looking for ideas. I mean, I've got 10 videos planned. But if you have other ideas of things you would like me to cover in Luminar 4, either in this tutorial series or in just subsequent videos, by all means, leave that as a comment down below. I'll be seeing you soon, friends. I hope you're having a super awesome time with Luminar 4. I've been enjoying the heck out of it. I've got a playlist I'll put there, and it's already got 25 or so videos in it about just Luminar 4. So we're going to get, uh, we're going to, you know what we're going to do? We're going to beat my Luminar 3 um video uh collection which was 192 videos or something like that we can do it you and me together okay i'm gonna shut up thanks for watching i do appreciate it have a great day i'll see you real soon tune in soon for uh episode two and i'll see you then and adios